The scene around the cross was crass and unfeeling. The soldiers, they're part of this execution detail. They were probably bored with the crucifixion because they had performed it so many times before. Uh -huh. They said that perhaps this team, after having performed so many, the reason why they began to cast lots for his raiment is because it was another whole hum exercise. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand what they had done. So at this point in their life, they were very callous and emotionless. Mm -hmm. First, the soldiers began with the cruel process of nailing the criminal to a cross. Yes. Yeah. Then hoisting him up, <clears throat> the cross swaying forward and then back until it was secured with wedges at the bottom to hold it upright in the hole. Yes. And when the task was done, they sat around the base waiting for the criminal to die. For you see, it was a boring process. Mm -hmm. They said sometimes they sat there for days. That's right. Looking for the individual to die. Yeah. So to pass the time, they began to gamble, deciding to cast lots who will be awarded the victim's possessions that is the scene but in the midst of it comes an astounding powerful word from the criminal on the center cross uh -huh. father forgive them yes for they do not know what they are doing this is an unselfish request how many of us, if we were put in the same predicament, would we have the wherewithal to seek the help of others, to seek to help others? Yes. What is Jesus saying in his last hour? Jesus is saying a prayer, a request to God Almighty. It is remarkable, however, that Jesus isn't asking for himself. You or I would be terrified and overwhelmed mm -hmm. trying desperately to retain our composure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our prayer would probably be, God help me. <laughs> Get me down from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I can't endure this. Mm -hmm. But Jesus' prayer is one of complete unselfishness. Mm -hmm. He's concerned for the people who are responsible for crucifying him. And is asking God to forgive them. Instead of thinking of himself and his own needs, he is thinking of those whose souls are in much greater peril than his own. The first thing we learn from this word is love. At his last extremity, Jesus loves. Brings to mind, for God so loved the world. Yes. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Father. A term of trust. Confidence and endearment. But his love is not merely for those. With the debates of the cross. But. His prayer reveals a gentle love for God himself. Mm -hmm. At the moment he begins the long course of death through excruciating pain, he speaks in love to the only one who can deliver him, mm -hmm. God himself. Yes. He speaks not for himself but for others, and he speaks in love. Mm -hmm. Think about the word father in this prayer and consider the alternatives. God is the generic term for deity. Uh -huh. Lord is a term of respect and honor for one who is exalted in rank. Well, This term was substituted by the Jews to avoid saying the divine name of Yahweh yes. or Jehovah. Yes. When reading the scriptures, almighty God would be a bit formal 
at the disparate hour of one's crucifixion, but it would express God's extreme power. Mm -hmm. Creator God is a common substitute for Father among Christians who want to avoid the paternalism they see in the word Father. But Creator God is not a term of relationship. Mm -hmm. It is rather one of function, and we owe it to him. All right. <clears throat> Father, on the other hand, is the first and foremost a term of relationship and endearment. Yes, sir. It is a family term spoken within the family circle. It was often expressed as Abba, mm -hmm. which roughly translated might correspond to our dad or daddy. Yes. Jesus had used this intimate Aramaic word to address his father in the garden of Gethsemane. Yeah, work it. The night before it is also the cry of the spirit of God within us, helping us to reach out to God. In this prayer, at his last hour, Jesus addresses the God of the universe yes. with the simple term, Father. Father. Woo. And he invites us to do the same. When Jesus' disciples ask him how they should pray, he gives them a model prayer that begins, Our Father. Uh -huh. At the beginning of his prayer with the word Father, Jesus expresses at the same time a love and a confidence, a trust. One who doubts might pile up descriptors of God to address his shaky faith. But one who calls him simply Father knows him, Ooh. trusts him, and is confident in the outcome. By beginning his prayer with the word Father, Jesus expresses at the same time a love and a confidence and a trust. Mm -hmm. Consider the prayer again. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus prays that the Father would forgive them. Mm -hmm. Who are they for whom he prays? All right now, come on. Let's consider the possibilities. Come on. The soldiers. Yes. He could be praying for the Roman soldiers who routine, routinely put men to death on this site of Golgotha. They destroyed a human life brutally without <clears throat> compassion. Mm -hmm. But they didn't initiate the action. They had no choice. Mm -hmm. They were merely following orders. Only after the fact did they realize with awe and terror what they had done. Surely one said he was the son of God. Come on, sir. Come on. Bless him, Lord. The other centurion would say it could have been that this is the soldiers that he was asking for forgiveness. Uh -huh. Pilate. Pilate might have been a better candidate. <laughs> However, against all law, he had given the order for the crucifixion. He had found Jesus innocent of the crimes with which he had been charged. Yet the pressure of the Jewish leaders yes. and his fear of riot forced him to go against his own better judgment. Uh -huh. He signed the death warrant and then publicly washed his hands. Yes. The crass, double-faced act of a self-serving politician Desperate to hold on to power. Perhaps Jesus was forgiving Pilate for the weakness of his character. Oh, come on, sir. The chief priests and the scribes well. were the prime force behind the crucifixion. Once Jesus had cleansed the temple of their greedy trade in animals and money, changing at outrageous exchange rates, they were determined to kill him. Yes. You do remember the story when he went in and he cleansed the temple. Yes, sir. And he threw him out. Hallelujah. Behind the scenes, they had paid off Judas for his insider betrayal. Mm -hmm. Talk about insider Inside trading. trading. Yes, sir. That's good. 
They sent temple soldiers to arrest him in the garden of Gethsemane. They tried to get the people to testify falsely against Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. They brought his case before Pilate and stirred up the crowd to demand that Jesus be crucified. It may have been the chief priests and the scribes that Jesus was forgiven. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were his early enemies. Yeah, work it, sir. Jesus' plain teaching about the kingdom of God offended them both. The Sadducees sought to discredit him. The Pharisees were the first to actively plot Jesus' death. If Jesus came to our churches today, well, help us, Lord. How many of our leaders would oppose him openly? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Some might plot to destroy him. Mm -hmm. The real Jesus is just too threatening to establish religious power. Well, help us. Power that the religious leaders wouldn't want to give up. Yes. Because when you have a true encounter with Jesus, <clears throat> it affects change. Well. Yeah. You can't say that you've been in the presence of the Lord and still behave the same way. Help us, Lord. There is a a a a a, a politician. Bless him. From Indiana, who is the mayor of a town in Indiana, and he's openly homosexual. Yes. And he declares that he is a Christian. Uh -huh. Good one. Yeah. And so I took notice of that. Because my Bible says, he that is born of God cannot commit sin. <clears throat> but a better translation of that same verse is, he that is born of God cannot practice. That's it. Sin. That's right. That's right. Maybe Jesus was saying, forgive him. <laughs> because you're dragging my name through the dirt. That's why people say there's nothing to this Christianity thing. Because too many of us who profess and proclaim to know who he is. I'm not living the life that would demonstrate that he is our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, we are the real ones that sent Jesus to the cross. Well, help us. Our sins, our corruption, our weakness, and pettiness. But oh, we can be so petty. Petty, sir. We can be so petty. The way we're headed on our own is to our doom. Yes. That's what Jesus says. Mm -hmm. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Uh -huh. But the end, Era. show enough, show enough, show enough, show enough, is destruction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the gate to eternal life is exceedingly narrow, he tells us. So narrow that few find it on their own. Without Jesus' active campaign to bear our sins upon himself, the righteous for the unrighteous, none of us could be forgiven. Well, help us. Jesus is under no illusions. He knows why he has come to the earth. He explains it with utmost clarity to his disciples. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served. But to serve well, and to give his life as a ransom for many. You and I made the cross necessary. We were the ones he prays to forgive. All right. It's you and I that put Jesus on the cross. The Bible would declare it this way. That our best righteousness is as filthy rags. I, I don't understand why we still try to do things to earn 
Jesus is love. Well, help us. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful. Glory. That it's a free gift of God. Mm -hmm. That he loved me when I couldn't even love myself. Jesus' love is so strong that it's unconditional. Uh -huh. We can talk about I love you, but can you love me until I change? Well, Can you love me until I get things together? Can you love me until Jesus says, I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. It's for me. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If we knew what it was that we were doing, we wouldn't do what we do. <laughs> I'm on preach now. If, if, if we really understood what Jesus provided for us on the cross some 2,000 years ago, we wouldn't treat our brother or our sister the way that we do. We wouldn't talk about them the way that we do. When someone would come to us with the gossip, come we on. would say, did you pray? Uh -huh. Not him, not her. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. If we really understood, oh glory, the gift that was given to us. If we really understood the gift of eternal life that was provided for us, we would treat each other better. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Bless him. Lord. Bless him. Bless him Lord. People are forgiven. Are people forgiven, rather, only if they don't know what they're doing? Jesus says, Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. For they do not know what they are doing. Does God hold those who put Jesus' death responsible for their sins? Yes, he does. Bible says he is a just God. <clears throat> they had seen Jesus perform miracles. They had heard the truth spoken by the Son of God himself yes. and had yet sought his death. <clears throat> there was plenty enough rope to hang them with all justice. <laughs> they knew this was a dirty business. Well, Their hearts were corrupt, but what was lacking was a full understanding of the magnitude of their sin. That they lacked. Paul explains it like this. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Paul himself, who persecuted Christians to their death, did it because he just didn't understand. He says, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. What we learn from the first word is that God is merciful. <laughs> Far more merciful than any one of us deserves. Well, yes, each of us has plenty enough sin to condemn us. Yes, sir. But God is looking deeper. He has made a way that we do not deserve because he knows that if we really knew the truth, would we embrace his son? Mm -hmm. Jesus' prayer on the cross tells me that God has found a way to forgive us. Well, come on, sir. That's good. <laughs> what does it mean to forgive? <clears throat> this leads me. The word in the Greek is aphemi, with the basic meaning of to send away. Mm -hmm. The word occurs often in Greek commercial papyrus, in the fragments of the time with the idea of to release from legal or moral obligation. Or consequence to cancel, to remit, to pardon. 
The word was used in legal documents to describe releasing a person from an office, severing a marriage, obligation or canceling a debt that was owed. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus uses the verb affirmy in the context of a debt. Uh -huh. Did you nor I was able to pay. Amen. To pay. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He is speaking of sins as a debt owed to God, which must be paid. The Lord's Prayer asks God to cancel our debts as we cancel others' debts of sin committed against us. In the parable of the unforgiving servant, Jesus illustrates the concept of forgiveness in terms of of massive financial debt owed to a king. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a song that says he paid a debt that he did Didn't not owe. owe. Mm -hmm. I owe a debt, I owed a debt I could not pay. that I could not pay. <laughs> I needed someone to wash my sin away. That's good. And now I sing <clears throat> that brand new song, Amazing Grace. For Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. Amen. Amen.